Hello, I'm Brenda Murray and this is Studio 56. Studio 56 is your hub for all things urban sketching related. Video interviews, blog articles, merchandise, books and art supplies. Right now I'm chatting with Oliver Holler. Oliver is a, a scientific illustrator and an urban sketcher from San Francisco. Hi Oliver. Hi Brenda, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Oliver, you're not originally from San Francisco, right? Uh, no, you can probably tell from my accent. I am uh, originally Austrian and uh, life, has, life has brought me west, uh, more and more west. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, so I want to chat with you um, first uh, about something you told me once. You said when you were a little kid, um, you dreamed of becoming a painter, a scientist and a pirate. And so I'm hoping that, that we can talk a little bit about your trip up the Amazon on what, a cargo, cargo boat of some kind? Right, yes, that, that indeed was my trip. And I think um, I'm still out there to achieve most of it. Um, the, the, the boat that I was riding wasn't exactly a pirate boat, but um, I think it approached it uh, <laughs> a little bit. All of your pirating expectations? Well, you know, what I, what I really meant by aiming to, aiming to be a pirate was um, um, achieving a sense of freedom more than the, the robbing and the more nasty parts. Um, and I think that's in, that's in common with um, my idea of um, the scientific endeavor and the painting. So I think that's the underlying commonality here. Cool. So tell me about this trip. When did you go on this trip and how long was the trip? Um, so that part of the Amazon was, was part of a longer trip that lasted for about 10 weeks. And it was in uh, 2014 when I, when I um, had some time off and could um, venture through Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. So that the part of the Amazon, yep. uh, the part of the trip up the Amazon was from Colombia into Peru for five or six days on a little cargo ship. Wow, wow. And tell me about the ship. I, I heard there were chickens involved. Well, there's all sorts. It's, it's, uh, it was mainly a cargo ship. It wasn't really a touristy um, boat um, of leisure. It was really mainly to transport goods and, and, and locals from A to B along the little villages um, spread out on the Amazon. And so as, as it happens, then there's of course um, lots of livestock involved too. Yep. <laughs> and you slept in a hammock? Yes, there weren't, there weren't really any cabins of, of, of sorts. Um, it was all like top deck was, um, with, was um, available to hang up your own hammock. So if you had one, you could hang it up and you were just like, uh, wiggling along through the days. <laughs> oh, so is your hammock um, like outdoors? You were actually out like on the open deck? Well, there was a little, um, there was a little roof, but it was like the sides were open, but it, it's hot enough anyway, so that you, that you don't want to have any closed quarters. Um, the oh. mosquitoes, of course, um, realize that it's all open too. <laughs> okay, so how were the mosquitoes on this trip? Yeah, well, that's a little bit of a challenge. Um, um, I'm fortunate that I'm not too, too much of the target, but um, um, yeah, you get a bite or two. Oh my goodness. And so you brought your sketchbook on the trip? I did bring my sketchbook along, yes. And um, I, I, I took the opportunity to assemble that into a little, um, into a little narrative. I, I like the story, storytelling aspect of, of sketching and that was, a, that was a good opportunity back in the day to to, to follow that passion and um, assembling, assemble that into a little something. Cool. And you assembled it into more than a little something. You wrote a book, right? What well, it's a, yes, it's a, it's a little um, travel log um, mm -hmm. that I assembled, especially once I was back and um, collected all my sketches and um, added, edited the narrative that I had in mind, that I, what, I, what I had experienced and what I had come across, mm -hmm. um, and then assembled that into a, into a little book. Yes. Cool. And do you have a copy of your book there? I do. Um, so this is what it's called. Um, it's called No Road In, No Road Out. Um, slow Boating the Amazon. It turns out on the Amazon, there literally are um, um, cities um, like Iquitos that don't have any road leading to them. You can only fly in and fly out. Wow. Or travel by hammock, like travel by a slow boat up the Amazon. So you can see a few of this is the, the boat and there's a narrative along with some people. 
That yeah. looks gorgeous. That looks looks beautiful. Book. <laughs> That's the sort of thing, yes. Wow, and your book happens to be for sale at Studio 56 in our book section. Yes, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, that's wonderful. So um, that sounds like a, an amazing trip. And gosh, you're obviously a, a imaginative, adventurous person. Um, mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit about your life and how you came to be an, a scientific illustrator. So I started off as a scientist um, with a lot of rigorous training and a lot of um, dedication to that. So that I started off um, in college in Vienna and then I um, worked on a PhD in Cambridge in the UK and then I came here for, came to San Francisco for postdoctoral training and um, it was all um, it was great until it became too all-encompassing and I needed um, to find more balance in life and picked up a habit that I had fallen out of um, drawing and sketching and um, then that um, became became another focus in, in life and so at the time when my postdoctoral period, my, 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 my contract at UCSF um, ended, um, I had started to do commissioned work for people, for, for scientists, um, interpreting their stories, um, their papers and research in an easier, easily approachable manner that, it, that they can use for visuals in their talks or on their webpage or as covers for the magazines that they publish into. Mm -hmm. So when that, uh, um, when that stint at UCSF came to an end, um, after going on that snowboard ride in the Amazon, um, I continued with that line of work and I've been fortunate enough to, to make it work so far. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you have a unique set of skills. I mean, it, you're doing like the left brain, right brain thing, right? Like, you know, a, a scientist is usually a very analytical thinker. And, yeah. Right? And, and an artist is more of a creative uh, imaginative kind of person and you are near the whole package you have you know you're working on both sides of your brain right that's really interesting I think it puts you in a unique position um, as a scientific illustrator because you're you have the scientific background so you know when you're approaching clients or whatever you're able to speak their language right um, absolutely yes when they when they send me their, their articles that they want to have interpreted I, I understand what um, what they are after and also the content um, that they're actually sending me so I can give them an informed um, opinion and suggestion on that. But I do like the creative aspect as well. Not to say that science isn't creative, um, it definitely also is. Yeah. But I, I, I do, as you said, I do like um, both aspects. Also, but I also like the analytical aspect in sketching, for example, like why does a sketch work? And look at it afterwards and what are the aspects that I like about it and what are the aspects that I don't like about it and is there, is there any can I make any rhyme or reason out of that? <laughs> right, right. So um, how, how are your illustrations different from what uh, you would typically see in scientific journals? Well first of all they are, I, they are handmade. Um, this is now a distinguishing criteria. I think um, now that more and more of the the artwork has gone digital. Um, there's a refreshing aspect of um, of analog work. Um, that also means that there's an original that the that the authors that commissioned the work um, can have and hold in hands and give to give away or hang hang up if they want to. Um, second of all, it's a subject matter that different differs. I I don't draw many muscles or you know subject matter that's traditionally associated with scientific illustration. What I what I really do is taking the story that needs to be, that the authors have created and interpreting that in an analog way. And so it's about storytelling more than showcasing anatomy or proteins or such things. Right, right. Um, and so um, what I see when I look at your art mm. is um, illustrations that are really playful and imaginative and fun and um, uh, just almost fantastical. And um, so in your opinion, what, is, what do you feel is the role of the imagination in art? I think there's, there's several roles for imagination. I mean, if we talk about, if, I, if we talk about um, the scientific illustration that I do, then of course you have to imagine what it actually is that you want to tell. I mean, you, you get the text, but you need to transpose that into a universe that, uh, that you want to tell the story in. So there's the imag imagination 
that's necessary. And then for the actual sketching, um, I think there's also imagination or at least um, heavy editing of reality necessary. Right. <laughs> or bene and beneficial for that matter, I think. Do you have an example uh, of your art? Uh, yes, I have several examples. But, um, so this would be a this would be one of the um, more commissioned pieces for for scientists. This is called um, imparting ideology, and you know, in all walks of life, that that is happening, where someone likes to impart their ideology onto you. And I, I thought um, converting a a dog or or fox into the frog um, would be a good analogy for that sort of that sort of message. Right. Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like I could be looking at a children's book uh, illustration. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, some, some are more playful and some are more um, ironic or irreverent, perhaps. So some are more useful, can be more applied to children's books than others. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember you said to me, um, you know, Brenda, when I'm making art, I like to be entertained as well. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, that's, that starts with the sketching. I... If I go out, which, which I like to do a lot, um, I look for subject matter or a scene or a scenario that I actually enjoy drawing and that I can project some sort of story onto. Um, so because we talked about this editing, I want to show you a sketch that I just did two days ago. Yeah. Um, and this is, um, this is a sketch of Union Square in San Francisco. Um, we have this, this statue and that statue has, um, Nike, the goddess of victory, on it, and I was I was intrigued by all these um, billboards in the back on those high rises, um, and one surprisingly enough is also got Nike on it. It's a different kind of Nike. It's a sports, um, right? Sports Nike, and um, I thought this contrast was intrigued me sort of and, and made it all worthwhile for me to do. So I was I, I was editing the elements so that the billboards would actually be be all lined up over here. They were not necessarily in that place, but for my composition, it would work better. And the statue wasn't right here, but it might have been, you know, way over here. I just repositioned myself to be able to put it into that sort of thread. So that's what I mean by editing. I think once you have an idea down, um, I'm more than happy to rearrange elements to, from reality to, put, to make them fit. Right. And so in, in the context of uh, urban sketching, um, do you feel that it's, that it's at all possible, really, to capture, uh, capture a place and moment in time? I think it is possible to capture a place and moment in time, but you capture your place and your view of that moment and, and, and that, that place in time, not, not the objective um, place that everyone, no one would agree what it all looks like and what aspects to, to focus on. And everyone has their own tools that they interpret that with, which already restrict or, or expand reality or the, the possibilities to capture things in a certain way. So, but I think this is the beauty and the, the advantage. So we should use that um, as much as possible yeah. rather than be afraid of it. Yeah, I remember um, you said something about um, developing a vocabulary of images in your mind. And so, um, you, you talked about how it's not necessarily so much imagination that you're drawing on, but you're drawing on this vocabulary of images that you've already accumulated from your years, you know, fr that all of us have accumulated um, w as we've taken time to, um, to go out urban sketching. You, you learn something, right? I think so. I mean, if you, if you go out and perhaps um, draw lots and lots of people, then you will your the people that you draw out of your imagination will more and more approach um that skill and that 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 level that you observe as well so it is just having done the thing for a lot of times it carries over into into doing them from scratch and then of course you're also able to combine elements that you have seen out there um, right. or arrange them in a new way right right do you have another sketch you want to show me I have um, lots of sketches. I have um, like this one, it's also heavily edited. Um, those are all portraits from the national, those are all figures from the National Portrait Gallery in London. I was doing a workshop in London and was fortunate enough to spend a little, little bit more time um, before there. And the National Portrait Gallery is one of my favorite museums. You have all those um, mainly British um, 
dignitaries and royalties um, hanging on the walls. And I like to just go around and, and assemble them in new ways. I, I make sketches of the paintings and then I've assembled them here um, on, that, on that page. So this is another way of editing, um, which is just something that you get to do your own thing out of what is out in the world. And it keeps, is, is, um, endlessly entertaining and captivating to me. <laughs> yeah. And so that was actually a shameless plug because we've just launched a new product line called Expressive uh, Portraits at Studio 56. And so that beautiful sketch is featured on products at Studio 56, t-shirts and mugs and uh, prints and uh, all kinds of things like that. So if people are interested, they could go to the website and check it out. Have you got another sketch? I do have, um, I don't have many more sketches, so we can go on forever. Oh, okay. um, So here's one. Yes. Um, and in this particularly one, I've got a three-year-old son, so I get to, get to spend a lot of time on the playgrounds these days. Yeah. And there's, of course, all sorts of stuff to observe. And I, I love observing people and their behaviors and what's going on. So, of course, there's a fair number of, of strollers with all sorts of... Um, contraptions loaded on and I thought it would you know minimalism was on my mind I've been reading about it and I've been hearing blogs and, and podcasts about it so I thought this might be an interesting scenario to act out that fantasy of mine of well, what if um, that that little kid like brought up this topic and asked mom what is minimalism so I this is this is drawn from life but then I was, you know, the, the pile on that stroller wasn't as high. So I was looking around and looking for other things that I could use to pile on top. So I'm, I'm more than happy to take liberties like that. Uh, so, so fine. <laughs> Ironic, right? So there's... Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, um, that's wonderful. So... Yes. Do you want to see another one? Sure. So this is, this is in, a, in a similar sort of series, I guess, when I was doing that sort of thing. So we have all those parents sitting in the back with the iPhones, like entertaining themselves. And then we have the kids playing in the sand pit. And, and then we have this sort of never ending topic that usually is acted out in the other direction where the parents say that, I really wish my mom played more with other, with other adults. And the other guy said, yes, it is so hard to get them away from their screen. Uh <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's so, good. You know, a little bit of um, detailed observation and um, a little bit of ima imagination and putting words into people's mouth if you see it fit. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like to do that. It's great. It's, it's fun and playful. I mean, I really love it. Um, and I, I'm excited for you because I know you've got some workshops coming up in San Francisco this spring and one of them is uh, expressive portraits, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, expressive figures. I, I, I teach all sorts of things. Um, I, I like to do that. Um, for me, sketching and illustration is a more solitary activity, whereas um, teaching gets me, um, gets me on the, you know, with people and interact with them and, and see whether I have formed um, a structured enough opinion of what I actually think of things. <laughs> And usually it works out quite well. And I get to travel with it a little bit. So um, I'm quite happy about it. Good. You know, Oliver, I think you're the king of expressive portraits. I really do. When I look at your, no, really, when I look at your people's sketches, they're just like, they're so, they are, they're so expressive and so interesting. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you're just throwing these pieces together and in a way that's so appealing. It's just really, really fun to look at your sketches. There's like a lot of play and a lot of fun in your artwork, I think. Even though it's, you know, maybe illustrating a really serious topic, you know, as a scientific illustration, but there's a lot of fun there. I really enjoy them a lot. Thank you, yes. Uh, you're making me blush, but that's definitely something I'm, I'm going for. So if, uh, if you pick this up, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> So um, you're going to be teaching uh, five workshops, I believe, this spring in San Francisco. And if people are interested in attending those workshops, they should go to www.studio56boutique.com. And uh, we have a pull-down menu there called Workshops. So just click on there and you'll get all the information. Um, 
if uh, people are interested. And you know, even if this video is playing for quite a while next year, you do teach workshops on an ongoing basis. So if people check back there, they'll be able to see what workshops you have coming up. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, Studio 56 is your hub for all things urban sketching related. Um, we have uh, several uh, product lines featuring Oliver's beautiful sketches and we will have more product lines coming up, so check back often. Thank you so much, Oliver, for chatting with me. Um, and uh, subscribe, click the little red button that says subscribe right there to our YouTube channel. We've got exciting interviews coming up and we'll be announcing the launch of some really exciting new sketching and watercolor workshops very soon. So thank you so much, Oliver, for chatting with me and we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thank you, Brenda. Thanks. Um, thanks for putting together this wonderful platform as well for all of us and uh, all your viewers and subscribers. And um, yes, everyone check it out. And thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye.